Some podcasts are like this. The bodies of three hikers were all empty and their organs were laid out like a Sunday dinner. And some podcasts are like this. You know what? I'm going to tell you why having a large penis ain't always a good thing. But only one podcast is where you can get in-depth analysis like this. Oh, you want that to blow up in real life? Fuck it. Let's oh, do you're it. such a money slut. Take it all. <laughs> <laughs> you want to turn that boy into goo into a fucking helicopter? Yeah. Ugh. Fuck yes. <laughs> Goo him up a lot. <laughs> you are now listening to Call 45. This is Beat em Down. And I'm Random Randy Savage. Find us on all your podcatching apps like Podbean or Spotify. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or just go to www.com. Colt45podcast.com. Also, check out our YouTube for that sweet, sweet video content. And for just $3 a month, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com backslash Colt45podcast for exclusive content and swag. Colt45, the only podcast that puts hair on your chest. Hi there, I'm Lloyd. And I'm John, and we're from Pina Comics. As we dive into your favorite pop culture topics, we may just occasionally use language that could be considered globaloni. What? No, I mean... Oh, foul? Exactly. Offensive? No doubt. Uh, crass? You bet your ass! Sophisticated? What? No, no! Uh, anyways, you get it by now. It's mostly just... Gutter talk! And one more thing. Watch out for spoilers. Sometimes we drop them like trousers. You've been warned. Listen in. <laughs> Welcome to the Pint Movie Invitational Series. I need information. I thought you might be able to help. Thomas Wells. Nice picture. What sort of information are you looking for? Because I got all different kinds. Kind I'll pay for. All right, we're back. It's another episode of The Pint. And as always, I'm John, and with me, uh, on a very expensive night, he just had to buy a brand new Wi-Fi setup so that he could record in time with us. It's the Manster. Manster, what's going on? Yeah, like you said, I had to run out there, um, bought a new, it's called Eero, E-E-R-O. Ever hear that? No, but they're not a sponsor, so don't throw oh, that shit that, out there. Yeah, is that a plug? Yeah, are you plugging Eero? No, no, I had, I had to buy it. Anyway, that's what it was. And I set it all up and, and shit, what am I, 15 minutes late? No, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, Anthony. So, sorry our, about that. Our special guest, Anthony, threatened to walk off. He he brought out his contract, showed me in the line again how it was 730, and I I smoothed it over. So as you, as you heard, uh, we have a special guest on tonight. His name is Anthony, and Anthony is yet another person that we have met through uh, Larry, Scary Larry's awesome Saturday night watch parties that he's been doing. I don't know what eight years now COVID's got me all screwed up with time uh, pretty much this whole year. Um, Anthony's always got a funny joke, always a good Tony's pizza reference, Tony's pizza, man. always calling dibs on the hottest girls in 1980s slashers. And uh, we decided to ask Anthony on to do a pint movie invitational. Anthony, what's going on, man? Not much. Same old, same old, same old. So, we're going to get into it with you in a few minutes. Lloyd's got his five questions. There's five questions okay. we like to ask people, kind of right. gauge their personality a little bit. But I do want to ask, give us a couple of your specific fandoms. What are you really into? Like, what are what, what, what's, what gets you going? Uh, Clive Barker. Uh, synthesizers. I'm kind of a synth nerd. I was never really a big comic book guy or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, uh, synthesizers, Clive Barker. What else am I really, really into? Uh, Depeche Mode. Are you a big Depeche Mode guy? No, uh, Nine Inch Nails. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love them both, but yeah, love Nine for, Inch. Yeah, my first concert was uh, Nine Inch Nails and David Bowie. Oh, yeah, wait a minute! Excellent. That was on my list. That may have been the same show Lloyd went to. Where was it? Uh, yeah, it was. I think it is uh, New Haven. Or was it New Haven or Hartford? It was. It used to be called the Meadows. Yeah, that's Hartford. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, what's really funny is so 
I guess to get a little deeper into this, Anthony's girlfriend, Laura, was on our show a couple times. You heard one at this point, definitely so far, where we talked about our favorite concerts, uh, Laura, myself, Lloyd, and uh, Scary Larry. And I had somebody, I can't remember if it was Chris uh, Frodell, our buddy from uh, Arguing With Myself. He, except for Laura, he had been to one of the shows that I had been to, that Lloyd had been to, and that Larry had been to. Nice. Yeah, oh, that's cool. And now, uh, now Anthony has been to a show that uh, Lloyd was with, and two of the guy, the two guys from the Mobile Horror Companion, our friends, and a great podcast, were at one of the shows I was at as well. So <laughs> it's it, it, we're in Connecticut. If you guys can't tell, if this was California, this probably would never happen. No. But we are in Connecticut, a very small state. So synthesizers, horror. You're you're where you're sitting right now. People at home can't see this. I see a Nightbreed poster. Um, I see, uh, uh, looks like, what is the yellow thing? What do you got back there? What are those? Those, those are, uh, they're like the instructions to, uh, uh, building models. One of them is King Kong. The other one is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, all right. Oh, cool. Very cool. Uh, no, go ahead. A, a horror guy also. Yeah, just random. Yeah. Just random horror stuff. I've always, uh, I used to watch when I was little, like mid eighties, late eighties, I used to watch, um, your Saturday nightmares on USA. I don't know if you guys remember that. I remember Up All Night more, but I think I do this remember was, that. This was before that. This wow. Was, uh, yeah, this, it was USA, Your Saturday Nightmares, and uh, it was just movies. They would show, like, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. They would show, like, uh, episodes of um, of uh, Twilight Zone, um, Night Gallery, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, good stuff. And then they would show, like, weird, weird little bumpers in between, and I, there's one that's burning in my brain. It was called The Contraption. It's like a 10-minute short video. And, and thank God for YouTube because I found it like a couple months ago. <laughs> I hadn't seen it in, you know, 25 years. But uh, even more than that, probably. Um, Richard O'Brien, uh, like sawing wood. He's building something, obviously. And they just show him kind of piecing something together. And then at the end, you hear like this snap. And you realize he's just built like a man size. Uh, mousetrap and he's in it and <laughs> and yeah they used to show like weird little that sounds like something you'd see at uh connecticut cult classics you know yeah. short film yeah, yeah exactly and yeah so just you know even just as a little kid because my mom was the same way when she was little she had her little black and white tv she would watch her favorite was mothra and uh you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and she right. just you know i she used to work nights she used to do nine one one. so basically she bought me my own tv with a little vcr so ever since I was little, I was just I grew up in front of the television. What movie did you pick for us to talk about tonight? Uh, eight millimeter. All right, so that's the stinger. Now we're gonna go to the five questions, and then we'll get into eight millimeter. So Manster, we got to still come up with a good name for this. Maybe the Manster Quision or something, or I don't know. But for now, it's still five questions. So why don't you throw five questions that's good at Anthony? For me. <laughs> All right, Anthony. Hey, I I never met you before before tonight. I mean, I've seen you obviously at the uh, the uh, Facebook Live uh, watch parties, yeah. and I I had very limited time, very limited internet. So I threw these out there. Let's see where they go. Answer them uh, honestly and as as elaborate you know as much as you feel good. Uh, Skittles or Starburst? Starburst. Not even not yeah, even not a even a hesitation for, at all. Well, uh, for a few reasons. So like Starburst, you kind of have to work for your treat. You know, you got to unwrap. Yeah, you got to unwrap it. And everybody has that order that they eat them in. I, you know, yellow, red, orange, then pink. That's my order. Uh, but they I would order. Do you eat in reverse order of your no. favorites? No, that's no, your. No, no, no. Pink that's, is the best. Yeah, well, no, no, wait, no, wait, that's wait. what I mean. That's what I mean. I, I oh, okay. the, my wait a favorite, minute. I eat last. Wait a minute. Wait a fucking minute. You pink, two. <clears throat> pink is the best one. <laughs> you two agree. Pink is the best Starburst. Yeah, yeah I love the pink, pink the best. and then and then red. Pink. Don't you talk no shit about pink. No, pink yeah. is the worst Starburst. No, it, uh, oh, red red, so red and orange are interchangeable. Like I can change those two and I'll be okay. But uh, yellow has to be first. Pink has to be last. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So for me, I'm going with the top two are red, most likely strongest flavor, and and yellow because i love lemon and Jeez. then orange is a is a third and pink in all honesty if they were they decided to change up the brand just get rid uh, of the pink you're just wrong 
All right. Sorry, yeah. uh, and the, All other, right. the other thing is with Skittles, they changed green from lime to apple, which just ruined the whole thing. So I, I didn't even know that. They did, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you we have to, a candy podcast a... coming up eventually. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, I didn't know. I did know that they took lime away. Okay, yeah. that sucks. All right. Yeah. You, you used to be able to take a handful of Skittles and just dump them in your mouth and you'd be all right. But now they changed the green to apple and it just takes over the whole. It takes over the whole flavor. All right. That's not all right. good. All right. Question number two for Anthony. Van Halen or The Cure? Which Van Halen? Van Halen. Okay. Uh, <laughs> still, still The Cure. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Have you ever seen The Cure? No. No. I've seen him a bunch. Never saw Van Halen, though. Me neither. I, I saw Van Hagar. I regret not seeing Van Halen. Yeah. yeah. I saw Van Hagar, but I did get to see Eddie Van Halen live. And, uh, you know, even though I thought that Sammy Hagar, this was right before he left the band, I thought that it wasn't a good show, and I was never a fan of his in terms of what he did with the band. I got to see Eddie Van Halen play Eruption, and oh, you know, right. he was fantastic. It was, you know, it was awesome. Yeah. He was never, uh, I mean, because I, I, I do kind of play guitar a little bit, too. Uh, he was never, Ace Freely was always my guy. Oh, okay. All right. Another Kiss fan. All right. Well, he had a Kiss mug before, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh i missed that okay all right the kiss all right i had one of those when i was about in fourth or fifth grade i had one of those big tall kiss garbage kids mm. remember when you're in school you get those order forms and you order books and stuff yeah. best yeah. day of the year order yeah. the kiss garbage can <laughs> 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 my mom didn't like it but hey Whatever. all right next one medusa or the kraken medusa's way hotter so i'm gonna go with her <laughs> This is true. Very true. <laughs> Dibs on Medusa. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. You might like like this next one. Uh, Amy Adams or Julianne Moore? Um, Julianne Moore from Boogie Nights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She has a great line in that. She says, you can go inside of me. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's memorable. <laughs> I remember it. Now, Lloyd, I, now, at first, Lloyd wasn't sure if he was going to be able to be on tonight. So he had sent me his notes to, to okay. do this and everything. And first of all, Lloyd, I want to say, and this is not joking or anything. Your notes are awesome. You, I, I want to come right out and give you praise <laughs> on this show. Your notes are so in depth. Like, I think that I'm, you know, I've got it going on with my little, my little bit of notes and I got shit uh, compared to you. Um, Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. What's After the secret? I sent them, I almost said to you, <laughs> I almost said something like, you know, they're a little haphazard. I didn't really get a time to tighten them up. Oh, my God. That yeah. was haphazard? Yeah. Uh, well, you... not, not <laughs> yeah. just the note section, the my note section. I, I didn't put any of those together. Usually I write shit down, and then I, you know, just sort of tighten it all up, but I didn't do that. All right. Well, I do but have yeah, a question. Thank you. I, I, uh, I spent some time doing No, you stuff. did a great job. I, I did notice when I looked at that one question, does that correlate to the fact that Laura – Anthony's girlfriend is a, a what they would call a ginger or a redhead that you picked those two redheads. Hey, I'm not stupid. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought I'm like, these are okay. Why is he picking two redheads? And then I went, Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Julianne Moore boogie nights is the right answer. <laughs> yes. It is. And the final question, groundhog day or ghostbusters. Oh, wow. Uh, ghostbusters. Uh, it's more ingrained in my psyche. Mm -hmm. you know it's older it's i was a little kid so i'm gonna go with ghostbusters as an adult i think i would rather yeah no ghostbusters, Let's ghostbusters. Yeah. there's no wrong answer there All yeah right. no they're, they're both fantastic so now that we know anthony a little bit better we can move on before we get into talking about 1999's eight millimeter starring nicholas cage why did you pick this movie i mean it's not necessarily one of my you know all-time favorites ever but i, I think it lends itself to a lot of discussion and people don't I, people don't really talk about this movie i don't know i don't know why i mean it did all right at the box office like it didn't you know uh kill any records or anything but it, it certainly didn't bomb completely well, yeah but nobody really seems to talk about it and, all right uh, it's definitely the, um, a forgotten yeah i don't movie, i don't I see why that's fair. I'll go over a little bit of um, the information about the film, and then we will go to the cast. We'll talk about the movie. We'll do some box office, see how it did in the year it came out and the weekend it came out. So the director of this film is the recently deceased Joel Schumacher. He's known for a lot of things, but he made on one end of his known spectrum is Batman and Robin, 
which we get you it. Had, you, you had to lead with that. I well, I'm leading. I'm leading with that to move to better stuff. So okay. he he gives us the nipples. He gives us the back credit card. He he's kind of considered in a lot of ways because of that a joke, but he's not a joke because. No. He made, well, here's another one that it's a better movie, not a favorite of mine. He made Flatliners. But then in 1987, before all of this, he made one of my favorite vampire movies of all time, The Lost Boys. I wanted to say this, watching this movie, Eight Millimeter, which is a, it's a big budget commercial movie, but it has a right. very dark subject matter. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't originally supposed to be big budget. Right. And I've got that here too. Um, but what I was going to say about it was, what I find interesting is that, he obviously shows and with lost boys and flatliners that if you had given him a Batman movie that didn't involve the, the amount of trash that he ended up putting into the two he made, he could have made a pretty good and dark Batman movie. I think he shows that from this movie alone, just the dark tone that you get from it. This came out in February 26th of 1999, by the way, Um, the writer of this, Andrew Kevin Walker, he wrote uh, seven sleepy hollow he uh, he did an uncredited um, screen uh, screenplay rewrite uh, on Fight Club. Fight Club, yep. Yeah. Yep, and cool. Stir of Echoes. So uh, he did a bunch of uh, pretty cool stuff. He totally, what do you want to call it? Uh, got disowned uh, the film. Disowned yeah. this movie because yeah. he wrote this. They made it less hardcore than the original idea, mm-hmm. and he said, "Fuck it." And to this day, he pretty much disowns this movie. Uh, he made it less hardcore. Yeah, they, it made it less hardcore because, yeah. and I'll let Anthony talk to this for a second. You, like you had said, this was originally supposed to be a much lower budget movie, right? Yeah, and actually they wanted David Fincher to direct. Yeah. Originally. Ooh, that and, I might have uh, liked better. Right? Uh, yeah, I mean, as much, as much as I like this movie, I would I would have loved to have seen that. There, there were a few other directors. Uh, William Friedkin and uh, Paul Verhoeven were also in talks with directing it. And the original star. Did you read who that was? Uh, yeah. What's his face? Uh, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe, who in 1998, when this was made, was not Gladiator Russell Crowe yet. He was L.A. Confidential and Quick and the Dead. He was gaining a name, but he wasn't a star yet. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to do this. He wanted to do the dirty version. Yeah. He wanted to do the low budget, handheld like gritty version and when joel schumacher came on and his idea was we have to hire somebody bigger which will draw more money and he wanted nicholas cage and at that point nicholas cage had just won an oscar and obviously did the rock and con air and he was you know that was the height of cageness uh as as it's known on the first pass back then he was very cagey on the first pass uh through the uh, mpaa this actually did get an nc-17 and it took uh, four to five major edits to get an R. One of the things that I found pretty interesting was the there's buttock thrust. Yeah, the, the, yeah, you can only have in a sex scene two buttocks thrusts. Mm-hmm. If you go further than if you pump one more time, yeah. you're in trouble. And the other thing that I thought was funny was uh, Clive Barker went through the same thing with Hellraiser. I can imagine because there's some pretty gross shit in that, and mm-hmm. some. But uh, he yeah. went through the he went through the buttock thrust thing. As long as there's two buttock thrusts and then a cut. And then another buttock thrust, you're good. But if there's more than more than two buttock thrusts in a row, you're not going to get your rating. Two pump chump is what it is. <laughs> um, the uh, one other thing I thought was interesting was at one point later in this movie, there's a scene where uh, our hero is in a like a porn flea market, and he's kind of watching an enema movie. That is a, a real, real enema, movie. <laughs> enema movie. That is not like an actor. They had to cut that Did up. You see that before? Yeah. I well uh, yes it's in my collection it's on it's I don't I don't I have it on I Blu-ray think, I think we're watching it tomorrow on yeah on, uh, <laughs> yeah that's Larry's that's Larry's surprise for us tomorrow is uh is bitches and butts five it's a, um, it's a double yeah it's, it's a double feature that and sallow oh I've heard that's pretty rough too all you right <laughs> no no okay. no thank you <laughs> I've got limits I have limits oh, but it's so beautifully shot I, well I'm sure it is but <laughs> I don't know <laughs> you can have that I, I I don't I don't want anything to do with it I'll watch that the same day I watch uh what is it a Serbian film never oh, that's bad too. yeah that's just yeah I don't even yeah, I saw that once. So I'll never watch it again. No, thank you. Manster, why don't we get into the cast and talk a little bit about who are the players in 8MM? 8MM. 
Not to be confused with Eight Mile. No, no, mom. I was a little excited about when I first heard. It. Like, oh, oh, Eight Mile, good. <laughs> Lloyd said, "Mom, spaghetti." <laughs> uh, so we got Nicholas Cage as Tom Wells. Uh, he's a private investigator, a surveillance specialist. Guess I won't go much further than that. Bruce Willis also turned down the role. Oh, really? According to IMDb. Hey, if it's there, it's got to be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I usually, I usually uh, look into all that stuff, but not enough time this time. Then you got Joaquin Phoenix as Max California. He's an adult video store clerk. I was watching this uh, movie with my wife, uh, at least for a portion of it, before she got up and said, I can't watch this movie. <laughs> I took my wife to see this in the theaters. I oh. remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me and Lindsay saw this like, uh, you know, we were already together for a while. But yeah, I saw this in the theaters. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, we were watching that, you know, the scene where you, where you see uh, Max. And we're both like, oh, he, he looks like Joaquin Phoenix. Until <laughs> <laughs> I realized, hey, that's Joaquin Phoenix. It is Joaquin Phoenix. At some point, doesn't he say my brother OD'd and I have a hair lip? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he claims yeah. he, he claims that's not uh, cleft palate surgery. That that's a birthmark. Okay. I always assumed it was cleft palate surgery, but he claims yeah. it's not. He claims it's a birthmark. But I have a feeling because his parents were very strange and hippy dippy, and they were in a cult at one point. Yeah. I think they told him that when he was younger, and he believes that. I, that's just my opinion. I think it Could is be. a cleft palate scar. But he thinks it's a birthmark because it, it looks like a cleft palate scar. Like, yeah, I truly don't even remember him having that when he was a kid actor because he was he was Leaf Phoenix when yeah, I was Leaf, a kid. Leaf Phoenix in Space Camp. Uh, yeah, Space Camp. Yeah, with the yeah. robots. And I don't remember, I remember him having it either. So then again, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. All right, let's stop doing this. Watch Space Camp. Yeah. Get back together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have James Gandolfini as Eddie Poole, a sleazy casting director. Fucking um, this not too far great. off from uh, Tony Soprano. <laughs> he, the, uh, no the casting director part. I disagree with that a little bit because Tony Soprano, although I'm not a huge fan of the Sopranos, he's a bad dude and he's got you know his morals are fucked up. But this guy is such a oh, yeah, fucking no, I, I don't piece of just, shit. Such oh, a is. piece of shit. He's like he's one of he's one of history's like great movie characters that you can't wait till he gets beaten to death, <laughs> which will get you, but he does. <laughs> You're like, please, somebody beat this guy to death. <laughs> back, back to uh, back to Max California, real quick. Um, uh, Mark Wahlberg was up for that role. That I did read. Yes, Marky Mark. I can't. I yeah. can't. See I Wahlberg actually wrote it role. down as Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Feel the vibrations. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, then you have Peter Stormare as Dino Velvet, uh, the underground hardcore pornographer. Dino uh, doing his best Peter Stormare impression. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he made my uh, he made my top ten uh, character actors list because yeah, he might great. be Peter Stormare all the time, but he's Peter Stormare and the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah he sure is. He's also of one of those guys that you can't place his accent. Like, I know he's Norwegian, but uh, yeah. what does that it, mean? It doesn't mean anything. Like, it could be a million different accents, and you just don't fucking know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of yeah. Uh, a lot of interesting people were up for that uh, role. Eric Roberts, I can't see that. Tommy Lee Jones, um, Charles Dance. I oh, think. I could totally see Eric Roberts. <laughs> I mean, that's his fucking character. That's what he does. Yeah, he's, that's probably yeah, unreal. Yeah, it might be too close to home then. Um, James Woods, Willem Dafoe, and Rudger Hauer. All, they yeah. they all fit. They'd all work, but yeah. we got it. We got Stormare, the best guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Anthony Heald as uh, Daniel Longdale. Uh, he's the um, the lawyer. Now I'd never seen this movie before, and so we're watching with my wife, and then he comes on screen, and I'm like, this guy plays just the shittiest characters. Yeah. There's yeah. no way yeah. you know this guy is a good guy mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. If no. you had never, if you had sure never enough. seen, if you had never seen Silence of the Lambs. That probably wouldn't have been as telegraphed, but yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's yeah. a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Then I don't know who this is. Myra Carter as uh, Mrs. Christian, uh, the old the widow. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you I know how? Call her from anything. Yeah, she. You know, she's an old lady because she talks like this. <laughs> <laughs> I loved my husband very much, Mister Wells. Please tell me that this girl is alive. I was waiting for her the whole time to throw the fucking blue diamond into yeah, the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. 
Uh, then you have Catherine Keener as Amy Wells. Um, that's Nicholas Cage, uh, Tom Wells' wife. Thankless role. Thankless yeah. role for her because she's a good actress, and this was kind of good. Yeah. And that actress was, or that role was just garbage role, in my opinion. Yeah, she had nothing to do other than act yeah. scared yeah. or irritated. Yeah, yeah. And, and pretend she was going to leave him, and yeah, it was, it was all it all sucked. <laughs> I'll just throw this in there. Norman Reedus. Yeah. And, uh, Warren Anderson, the scumbag boyfriend of the girl who was in the snuff film. I don't Actual know these stripper. other ones, too. Amy Morton as Janet Matthews. That's the mother of the girl. Yep. Chris Bauer as uh, George Anthony Higgins. Uh, he plays Machine. Machine. Um, yeah. <laughs> the guy with the uh, leather mask and, and all the uh, and all the porn films. When, when Machine, at, at the end of the movie, and we'll get to this, but when Machine... Takes his mask off. My name is George. Yeah. My, <laughs> my, my name is George. And then the, the best part is he puts those like giant glasses on and you essentially immediately think like you bought like a, a water pump from him at a Napa. He looks like he looks like every right. Napa guy on earth. And you're like, oh, this guy works at a, at a Napa. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, full yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> and he could very easily play, you know, like a bishop or a priest or. Yeah. Anything like that, but the way he looks. He was probably best known to me uh, as, I think he was, I can't remember if he was the cop, but he was on True Blood. He was one of the characters in True Blood. Oh, okay. Andy. Yeah. And uh, I only watched the first couple seasons of that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me yeah, too. I, know, I, don't, I, am, yeah. I, I, I only do watched, remember him. Yeah, first couple, and that was it. Uh, yep. He was on The Deuce, too. He was really good on The Deuce. Oh, I want to check that out. I haven't seen it's that good. yet. It's really good. All right. One more. Jenny Powell as Marianne Matthews. Uh, she is the girl in the in the snuff film, and uh, I believe that she just wants to forget about this film altogether because it appears nowhere. If you look her up, it it makes no mention of this film. There's a there's a reason why, and I think Anthony knows. Anthony, she's an actual stripper, or yeah. was an actual stripper. Okay, they brought her in. They hired her as a um, I guess almost like as an extra to block the scenes out and then to hire an actress. Yeah, and they just realized we've got a fucking, you know, she looks like a stripper. <laughs> she yeah. looks like she's beat and, you know, let's just use her. So yeah, she's, <laughs> she has no more IMDB credits because right now she's giving somebody a hand job in Baltimore <laughs> in the champagne room, no sex in the champagne room. <laughs> um, all right. You know what? I'm going to bumper sticker this one because I never get to do this. This is a film about a widow of a very rich, I don't know, oil. He Whatever does something. He is, yeah. He, yeah, he's, he, he he's, a, he's some kind of uh, giant. Mr. Ma Christian. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Christian likes to watch snuff films. <laughs> <laughs> so the widow of Mr. Christian discovers that her husband has in his possession after he had passed away a snuff film. Snuff films are a urban legend, hopefully. Um, and what they are, is there a form of pornography that go beyond pornography? It's essentially a murder caught on film. And she hires Tom Wells, played by Nicolas Cage, to investigate whether or not this is an actual snuff film or if it is a hoax. She essentially wants to feel better about her husband owning this thing and thinking it's just, oh, he's only sick to a certain degree. <laughs> um so, and she wants to find out, is this girl alive? Is this girl dead? If it is a snuff film, you know, let's find out who did this. That's the story. And Tom Wells goes on the case. And they set up Tom in the beginning of the movie as being a pretty good private eye because he's working for like a senator. And that's all you need right there. Is that if a senator trusts this guy? Right, to, that's all you need. That's all you need. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you, you get the, I guess, the idea that he's a, uh, He's pretty good at his business. A big part of this movie is the character of Tom Wells because right. he is essentially from the beginning of the movie. And as the movie goes along, you start to see a change. He's like a very like just even keeled guy. He's obviously okay. seen, he's seen yeah. a lot of stuff. He's a normal guy though. Yeah. I mean, he's a, yeah, he's a private eye. I mean, he, he's seen, he's probably seen some shady shit, but not, not like this. Yeah. <laughs> not, you know, yeah. He has to sit down and watch the actual snuff film and uh and you know, he, he what he sees disturbs the shit out of him, but it's yeah. then his point to determine whether it's real or not. So I guess right off the bat, we 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 delve into the world of underground pornography in this movie. And this movie like almost felt like a um 
a continental version of a James Bond movie because he just, he's going everywhere in this thing. Yeah. He, he starts like in Pennsylvania, he goes to Florida and then he flies to fucking California. Then he's back to New York city. And then right. he has to go back to California to kill somebody and back to New York city to kill somebody else. I, um, so Tom Wells is, is a man on a mission. Number one, I'm going to ask this question. Would either of you, I'm going to start with Lloyd and then go to Anthony. Would you have had the ability, like at what point, there's a scene, he goes to a office for like missing kids. And the guy says there's something like 500,000 new missing kids a year. He's got to look through files and files and match up a picture of this girl from the snuff film to a picture of that possibly exists in a drawer. And he obviously spends days and days doing this on what day or what hour (laughs) do you quit and tell the old lady she's got to hire somebody back? Because I'll be honest, stuff like that, I'm done in four hours. Like I I did my part. I'm done in four hours. Lloyd, what about you? All right. Well, you might have a little insight having seen my notes. I'm, I'm fairly meticulous when I do things. So I would, I'm pretty sure I would last the first day and then I would wake up and I would say, I just don't give a shit anymore. And that yeah. would be it. Anthony, so I would go the first day. Yeah, sure. I, I don't, I would not last that long. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah. And that's the one thing about the, I mean, there's not the one thing, like I never said this was a perfect movie. Obviously there's a lot of, you got to really just suspend your disbelief. Oh yeah, we're not we're not picking no, yeah, at it. We're not picking at it. We I do know. this with everything. Uh, I do that. Yeah, I pick at everything though too. But uh, right. no, yeah, no, I would. Yeah, maybe a day. I'd give it a day, and that's yeah. It's and, not. Uh, that's not for me. And then the other half of it is, and again, I get it. It's a movie. We got to get it moving along. Yeah. But when he finally does find the picture, would you have been no. able to put those two no, together? Not at yeah, all. Yeah, I, I did right away. When well, did I saw you really? It, I was like, yeah, that's really. Right. Not me. I thought, okay, this is a girl that is of the same category of girl as this one. But I don't know. And I mean, I get it. They got this movie can't be 12 hours long. So they've got to make it. So he finds her, finds out her name is Marianne Matthews. And he then travels. Oh, I forgot. He goes to Ohio. He travels to Ohio as well and um, has an interaction with uh, the mother. The mother is guilt ridden. She's been gone for five years. And she feels like it's partially her fault. Uh, She slapped her during a fight over her boyfriend. And uh, the girl basically leaves without much of a word. And I did see this bit in your notes a little bit, Lloyd. But I want to go one step further. And I'm going to ask each of you this. So there's a scene where after he is, he's pretending to be uh, uh, like a missing child official to talk to the mother and he's getting some info from her and he finds a notebook that helps him out greatly. But the mother is obviously very lonely. She's probably an alcoholic and so heartbreaking. It's, it is heartbreaking because you feel for her, Mm -hmm. but I guess the question I want to ask, because this is kind of comics, I'll start with Anthony. (laughs) Anthony, would you have done the mother for, for, okay. For two reasons. Number one, just sex. But number two, you know, like the comfort of a man's touch might get her through like another like six months. Yeah. So, Anthony, well, in in that situation, are you banging the mother? Probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, honest Lloyd, what are you what are you saying about this? Well, not not as a married man. No. Well, we're we're suspending. Well, he was right. married. He so. was a married guy. So yeah. Okay. In that situation, I wouldn't. Okay. All right. Not married not married you don't plan on seeing her again and you're not going to make a thing of this but you think hey maybe my dick can heal her a little bit are you doing it a little bit Uh, i well my hesitation might give away my answer okay (laughs) all right well me i'd probably do it because look i gotta look at it this way this is a very sad woman she's still held together pretty well like for she looks good she got all nice and dialed up for him exactly she got gussied up for him and cooked dinner so that's right I'm pretty much at the point that I probably owe you my penis. Um, <laughs> like even, a, even a little bit of it, maybe a part of it, like, you know, just, we, the, tip, maybe. just the tip just for a minute. Um, okay. So no, the, the scene, all joking aside, the scene with the scenes with the mother 
are pretty heartbreaking because obviously she's been, <laughs> well, I can't even say this seriously after all that, but no, it, it, she, it, it's, she's very sad. She's been through this really rough thing and he does in reality, he does not screw her. He does treat her with a lot of tenderness. And, uh, and this is where we start to see his character start to become more and more driven by this whole thing. Right. In fact, the fact that he didn't stay for dinner is a testament to his character if he had stayed, he that kind of would have been leading her on. You right. Know I mean? He's right. trying to just get out clean, not to, you know, because he's already stirred up a bunch of shit. He wants to kind of just leave it at that and get out rather than mm-hmm. kind of prolong the torture. Right. You know and, I mean? so. yeah. and we didn't mention this either, but like we did mention he's married to the underused Catherine Keener. He has a baby daughter. So they don't even ever talk about that, but that's got to be a driving force for him. Yeah, is that... See, that is one thing that bothered me about this because you never really get a sense of his motivation. He just suddenly. Well, uh, I feel like a yeah. lot of his motivation is he's at a, you know, he's he's middle class, maybe slightly upper middle class, and he wants his clientele to be, you know, he's working for people that are above his pay grade. He's trying to uplift him and his family and and get co- you know get his daughter through college and all that stuff. So he's kind of right. that's where his motivation is. He wants to be in the next little tier of of uh, you know success or whatever. Of yeah, not being Superman basically. <laughs> yeah, right. that's, well, that's what he wants. But it, they don't it, really do a good job of delivering that to you. I mean, right. you can take that step. I mean, it's obvious, but. I don't know. He goes from that to all of a sudden being a vigilante killer. Yeah, <laughs> smoking cigarettes, drinking beer, watching porn. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, smokes. Right? Yeah. He smokes a lot of cigarettes in this movie. Like he, really, he smokes in real life too. Okay, so maybe maybe he worked it in. But holy shit! Like yeah. you, you know, I know movies. They like to. The, you would just think this movie they can say you either smoke or you don't. But in this one, they're like you're going to smoke in every fucking <laughs> scene. Every <laughs> scene in this movie, you're smoking a cigarette. My, um, my reds too. <laughs> so he leaves. Uh, he leaves the mother behind. He gets the clues he needs. He goes and sees Daryl from The Walking Dead uh, at the <laughs> county at the county lockup. Finds out that she moved out to California and attempted to become a star out there. And in this movie, becoming a star means that she ended up in the uh, in the very shitty clutches of some very bad people. He gets out there and he realizes that he's got to kind of get submersed in this world of underground porn this is this whole bit yeah go ahead master i'm just saying he he so doesn't fit the type at all and uh, <laughs> i mean obviously that uh, you know he just looks so like a fish out of water there i think even max says that at some yeah, point yeah that's the point yeah and uh he's like you're, you look like more like your uh typical cop or whatever like yeah you know, he's got no, his- He's got his leather jacket and his aviators and, you know, yeah. If that was me in there, I mean, you could tell that I'm just not the kind of guy that fits into this situation. And there's no way I would have lasted like he did. No way. Well, I'd have bailed out so soon. Well, I mean, in, in two, what was it? At least one situation, he gets a gun pulled on him immediately. Um, <laughs> you know, right, and, yeah. and, and that's the importance of the Max character is – so, so Phoenix plays Max, who is this uh, adult superstore, which is one of the other uh, stretches that you're going to have to swallow is the fact that he just meets this one guy who knows all these people that he, where you can get him in. Yeah. Like that's, that's one right. of the other ones you kind of just have to like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And, he's the conduit into that whole CD underworld. Yeah. Yeah. Which is funny too, because and I think he's underutilized too. He could have been, he could have been so he much is. more. He yeah. is underutilized, and he get. I mean, he, you know, spoiler. We're getting there. He gets killed. It's like a forty-five minutes left in the movie, and it just feels like, it almost feels like, wow, was he ever even here? You know what I mean? Well, like, it's a, very, it's a very strange uh, act structure. I don't. If it, is it five? Is it five acts or seven? I can't even. I was trying to figure out where the acts are. I, I think it's either a five or a seven act structure. It's weird. You're yeah, better than me. Movie. It's the not movie a, feels like it's like over about two thirds of the way in. Yeah, it's not a three act structure. I think it might be five or seven because there's it, like you think it's going to end and then there's a little bit more. There's like two climaxes. It's weird, but uh, it's not a traditional three act structure. They start going to uh, like underground porn flea markets. Now, here's something I want to comment on right away. And um, they make it very clear two times in the movie and through conversation the rest of the time. If you bring up snuff to pornographers 
Yeah. They're going to freak out on you. He brings it up in the Mexican house yeah. and he gets a gun drawn on him. Oh, yeah, right away. He Pelic- brings it. Peliculas de snuff. Yeah, peliculas de snuff. Yeah. yeah. He brings it up to the other guy and the guy's like, take a fucking hike. Now, I just find it. Now, I'm not saying this isn't the way it really is, right. but I find it humorous that in this subculture that exists yeah. in the real world, that you bring up snuff and you're going to get in trouble. But there's a table of kids. Kitty porn, yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. Like, you said to somebody, hey, look, you got snuff. Get the fuck away, man. Hey, man, you got kitty shit? Oh, that's right over here. Oh, yeah. But, but, yeah, buy, yeah. Buy five, yeah. get one for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy, buy four boxes, get two free. It is weird to think that a movie with this subject matter mm-hmm. um, is kind of like a big Hollywood release. Like, that right. it wasn't a smaller, because... Again, like another reason why why I picked this movie because I mean, there's you know that that uh, yeah I mean <laughs> there's so many things uh, I don't know I can't even explain it but uh, wow I just had a thought and it just it happens anyway, no it happens that's no no problem that happens yeah it's just really weird that they decided to put something like this out especially like it's just so weird to watch a like a big budget movie that has a guy looking through a kitty porn table uh, but that's a whole other thing manster through plot machinations and through him studying this snuff film over and over again he begins to identify people in the film and he eventually identifies the three people that at the very least whether this was a snuff movie or not were involved in the filming. Who were the three people, Manster? So, well, you've got the James Gandolfini character, Eddie Poole, and you've got Peter Stormare's um, Dino Velvet, and then you've got The Machine. The Machine. So, the machine. Anthony, how would you just... Mysterious... <laughs> uh, what, what would you call him? Uh, execu- executioner. Yeah. S&M, zipper mask. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of a... Uh, kind of... I don't know, a bulky guy. Bulky, yeah. Yeah, not not a good time. Not a nice Saturday night out, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, Anthony, how would you describe each of these guys' roles in terms of what they do to get these movies going? You know what I mean? Eddie kind of is like the talent scout, if you will. Yeah. The machine is the star, and, and you know, Velvet's the director, I guess, if you want to simplify it like that. Velvet you know, how it works. And makes the movies. The, the girl... In the scene uh, when Eddie's about to close his blinds, when uh, Nicholas Cage right. is watching them, that girl in that scene, there was a whole other subplot with that girl. And like, she's kind of like uh, another Marion Matthews. Like, she's about to go down the same path, and her whole, her whole part in the movie got cut out for, uh, for time. Oh, so there's like a whole, yeah, like, and it was her first movie. So, like, her first, oh, like, like, role, you know, in Hollywood just got thrown in the toilet. And, well, uh, I guess, I guess they Joel, Joel Schumacher felt really bad, so he like he he let her have her reel so she could at least show it to directors for other roles or whatever. But so her, her only role possibly in Hollywood was is sitting on was sitting on Eddie Poole's her, desk about her to give him a sucking role. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hey, <laughs> I've never been in a movie, so good for her. She's one <laughs> up on me. Um, so yeah, he, he he finds out Dino Velvet is essentially a sex. Uh, director by uh, what do you want to call that? Like uh, commission, a commission. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, perfect. Yeah. That was the word I was looking for. You pay him, and he'll make the hardcoreest of hardcore, yeah. whatever you want. And you know, I they don't say it because nobody in this ever says it. But snuff obviously seems to be a possibility. And um, we get to the point where he hires them as uh, as his Tom Wells character. Eddie Poole knows something's going on because he's been surveilling. Wells has been surveilling Poole, and he makes a call at one point, which probably is a huge mistake, yeah. but he, he goes and visits him at one point and also makes a call to say, mm-hmm. you know, you guys are about fucking done. We find out in a little bit that that call and that visit, you know, <laughs> didn't help his cause at all. He goes to what was going to be the shoot of the movie. And the, one of the, my favorite lines of the whole movie is when he walks onto the, into the warehouse set <laughs> and he sees, he sees machine who, again, I can't, I can't stress it enough. He's like a, a large bulky guy in an yeah. S and M costume, yeah. you know, no shirt zipper mask. And Nicholas cage, you know, says machine, 
I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just a really great line. And Dino Velvet comes out and Velvet's got, you know, he's eccentric. So what is it with, uh, with Norman Reedus and crossbows? Because um, Velvet has a crossbow. So this, oh, is, right. uh, this is like 20 years before The Walking Dead. But he's got a crossbow and there's a table full of knives and other implements. We get nervous. We get a little nervous. Now, right before this, he had sent Max home because he said, hey, we've had enough. You helped me out greatly don't need you anymore but suddenly shit kind of goes sideways on the film set what happens manster yeah well when he comes in um unexpectedly uh he sees uh what's the uh long longmore long, what's mr. The guy's mr. Name? longdale 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 yeah longdale. The, the lawyer who hired him and um, he realizes uh this is an ambush and he's pretty much done for and that sucks yeah. <laughs> when you got characters like that in a in a dark skanky room with guns and you know you got no backup guns knives yeah. and your only backup is unfortunately we find out now a hostage because uh Dino Velvet and uh Eddie and uh and Machine have captured Max and they've got them all beaten up and they put them up on a uh, essentially a cross they have yeah, this cross. weird yeah. it was going to it was going to be i guess in the movie we find what out what were the parameters of the movie that he hired uh, him to do yeah he wanted two women one black one white hard bondage of course of and, course uh, yeah he says of course <laughs> hard bondage of course um yeah one one black one white and the rest was I think up there was to, something uh, oh he wanted the machine yeah, yeah the machine and the rest was up to dino yeah right that was it yeah, and you wanted to, you Dino wanted to uh, twist on it. Yeah, yeah. Give him that special Dino Velvet. <laughs> what yeah. was it? This is a Dino Velvet joint. It's like Spike Lee. <laughs> um, he's like the Spike Lee of underground snuff porn. So yeah, we end up. Uh, he he gets handcuffed, and we find out at that point that this was a snuff film. So mystery solved. Uh, Marianne Matthews was killed. Um, <laughs> yeah, we figured it was coming, but it's, it's told to him at this point mm. by Longdale. Um, and he figured out a little bit earlier in the movie. Oh yeah. When the phone call. From, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mrs. Christian. She yeah. says he took out over a million dollars from five different <laughs> accounts. My husband didn't deal in cash. So he puts it together, uh, from grandma McMurtry that, that, um, <laughs> that yeah these guys didn't get paid by longdale right yeah, he got a million and he gave him what fifty thousand yeah, yeah he gave him fifty thousand if that, if that yeah. and that's a great scene because this shows that tom is a smart guy he uses it to mm-hmm. get their attention on each other which exactly is what happens and we move into the next scene where longdale pulls a gun out to get away um Oh, we, we do have to go to the point that you had mentioned in your notes, Lloyd. I did read this note. What did you say about the whole going to the car to get the movie? Yeah, I I, I was like, they send Longdale out with uh, Tom to the car to get the original film because they want to destroy it. Why would they do that? Why, why would you send a guy out and a lawyer without keeping track of them every step of the way or just kill him and then go to his car and take the movie out of the car? It, that scene made no sense, and it didn't really, it didn't well, really amount to anything, right? Because right, originally that scene was supposed to take place in a car. Actually, it was even worse than it was. It was even worse than just going out to the car. Uh, Nicholas Cage's character had put the film in a, a safe deposit box across town in Manhattan, and the original scene was him and Longdale in a car in traffic, oh, having geez. that little having that little chat about why. And uh, yeah, so it was even worse. They had to, actually had to go across town. Now, I didn't mention this, but this is probably the first point in the movie. Again, like I said, the first half of this movie, Nicolas Cage is at like a two. He's very, he's very low key. He's just a PI. He's doing his job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, in the first half of the movie, he was very flat. Mm-hmm. But he know, was talk. playing it. He was playing it flat, yeah. which yeah. I appreciated. But when this scene yeah. happens, when he gets Fine. down to the car, goes he full cage. cages goes full it. Cage. Yep. He, yeah. <laughs> what does he scream? He screams at him like, you know, why, why did you do it? Why did you do it? <laughs> yeah, you, you jerk off. You watch it with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he gets in. He starts going full Nicolas Cage, yeah. hair getting crazy. Yeah. And as he, uh, 
as he is getting the the film out of his uh, little safe box in the trunk, he pulls out a, a like a dagger or a like a needle of some sort. Um, yeah, I think it's a it's a barrel cleaner for a gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. Okay, goes back upstairs, gets these guys to start fighting each other. During the fight, Dino Velvet is about to put his crossbow down because they're being held, you know, at gunpoint by Longdale. He does a smooth fucking move, comes around with the crossbow straight into the chest of Longdale. Longdale gets one shot off, hits Velvet, Peter Stormare, in the neck, and this is one of my favorite lines in the whole movie because Peter Stormare gets shot in the neck. He's slowly dying. As he's slowly dying, he just says, oh, God, not yeah. this way. Not <laughs> like, this way. What, like, what does that mean? Like, what it, like, I get it. That's pretty bad, but I would think, like, if you were burning alive, that's be like, no, not this way, or, no, like, getting said, eaten by a shark. No, not this way. No, not this way. No, maybe right that's what that, he, he says. I, I should have something more cinematic. Yeah, right. Eaten by a shark is what he would have wanted. Wanted something more grand, more Just okay. A, a gray shot. And then, he, the and then, he, and then his last words are "Machine, kill them all." Yeah. Yeah. So machine goes to kill them all, and uh, in in the whole fracas, so Longdale's dead, uh, Dino's dead. Machine goes to attack uh, Wells, and Wells. Oh, this part, this scene makes me cringe. He fucking stabs him right in his fat gut. Like he buries like a whole foot of metal into this fat fucker's gut and he goes down. And then there's a race between uh, Wells who's handcuffed to a table or a a bed and, and James Gandalf Feeney's fat ass trying to get under a car to get a gun. They have like this very weird kind of like little shootout. Well, just go around the car. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Go to the other side, Gandolfini. Go to the other side. Or you could drop the gun that uh, Longdale just dropped right there. Yeah. Because there should be another gun right there. Yeah, because the the one that he's getting under the car is the one that he kicked. That's he's getting his own gun that he had just kicked over there. That's right. So there yeah. should be another gun, like right there. <laughs> hey, again, Mr. Schumacher had his reason. Uh, Tom gets away, and I love this because Tom gets away. He gets out of the warehouse that they're in. He takes off Gandolfini's character, takes some shots at him, hits the window, misses. I can't think of a scene in a movie that I've seen recently that a fucking car hauls fucking ass like this car yeah. at one point the camera loses the car the and camera then, yeah. it, it just takes off out of camera range that was, that was done by second unit too that schumacher didn't even shoot that that was fucking that seems great because yeah. he's driving that's like, a good scene like 120 miles an hour in you know like it's in new york but it's in like the, the kind of like the back sections but like he is driving like a fucking crazy motherfucker mm-hmm. um now question number two i'm gonna ask each of you now we know he's doing okay he calls the wife he's fully freaked out because velvet has pictures of the wife and kid and yeah. kind of makes a very threatening suggestion that he is going to uh you know, go kill them or do worse with them. And he tells her to get the fuck out of the house and go to where we went last summer. Okay, I'll start with you, Manster. Would you take your family to that shit-ass cabin? Because, <laughs> like, he's got to be doing better than that. I, I was wondering if you were going to say that. Yeah, what was what the hell was that place? That was a dump. That was there's a super no, dump. There's no way they went there for any sort of vacation why, or getaway why, or anything. Why not just take him to the fucking Evil Dead cabin? Why Just yeah, go. Right. <laughs> Anthony, did you notice that, that it just didn't seem super vacation-y? Yeah, I, I, I guess I never really thought about it. But, yeah, yeah, I guess not. It looks like you ever watch Supernatural, either of you guys? Dumpy, no. no. Okay, well, every episode of Supernatural, they basically end up in, like, a shitty little low-rent um, motel. Like, that's, like, their base for the episode. And they're nicer than this place that he had his wife in <laughs> and his baby. He then has to go discuss with the um, with the old woman uh, <laughs> that he's going to tell her everything and that he wants to contact the police because he obviously doesn't feel safe with his family and uh, Eddie Poole still is out there. So he goes to the house, and Anthony, what do we discover? Uh, well, he calls first and lets her know that everything, what happened, that it was real. By the time he gets there, she's dead. She Killed herself. Dead. Yeah. You know, they never say how, though. <laughs> Did I, you? I can't, I I'm always pretty sure how. Did she pills, like, old lady pills. Pills? She didn't throw yeah. herself in the fireplace? No, Oof. it was pills. <laughs> throw herself in the fireplace. Yeah, no, she, um, 
She uh, she started a chainsaw and fell on it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> she made her own snuff film. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is going to hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> but I deserve it. But I deserve it for being married to that fucking scooge bag. <laughs> um, all right. So he goes and then, you know, this is kind of part of the movie where I do kind of like it because it's realistic because in a lot of other movies, when the when uh when alfred the butler to the woman hands him the money a lot of times the character would be like no just right i've, right. I've done my part no uh, he not no. only takes yeah, I'll take no, that yeah. he takes yeah. the money and gives it to his wife and says if i don't come back from all this shit take care of the baby the uh, you know take care of yourself i like that because there are, I, there are a lot of movies where the character would go i can't yeah. take that money yeah, no, you know couldn't, couldn't possibly accept i couldn't this, possibly uh, accept this yeah. i've i'm in too deep no he's like if you got another envelope in there i'll yeah. wait on the porch yeah. i'll be right here if you want to go look a little harder <laughs> um so now he's got two loose ends uh manster what's the first loose end who does he have to take care of first well, first he takes care of Eddie, so he's he's got to find Eddie. He takes them. He he makes him take them both to so the shooting site. That means he's got to fly all the way back to California. Oh yeah, there's Don't forget. there's all kinds of logistics that <laughs> yeah. we're just overlooking here that make no sense. But anyway, so he does get Eddie. Um, where did he pick up? Did, now I'm you know I'm thinking of uh, when he went to Machine's house. But how did he actually get Eddie? <sighs> He's is he working on his car or something? No. Oh, he's he's packing his. I think he's packing his. I think he's like trying. He's about to like leave or something. I think he's like packing his trunk or something. He gets him he, out of his car, right? Yeah. I mean, like he closes the the thing on his. On okay, his car. yeah, it's yeah. a really rare that, car, by the way. I forget what it's called, but that's a really nice car that he's got. So I know. I guess they fly together to uh, the location of the snuff film. And, you know, he just makes him say, you know, where'd you do it? What'd you do? You know, why did you want to watch it? This and that. Where did you bury her? And he's um, una- he's unapologetic. He's a uh, fucking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he's totally doesn't give a shit at all about this girl. And he's a taunter. Uh, he he taunts him. I guess he he rips out some wires, you know, from from uh, from some conduit that's hanging loose on the wall. He ties oh. him up, uh, does the old around the neck and then ties the hands together deal. Uh, and then threatens to shoot him, and he puts a gun right in his face, and uh, Eddie's taunting him and taunting him, saying, you're not a man, you can't do it, blah, 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 and he can't. He he gets out of there, he leaves. Uh, he calls up the mother of the girl on the phone and goes <laughs> back to their prior conversation, say, you know, tell me, tell me that you want vengeance, tell me that you loved her. Well, he t- first he tells her that she's dead. Which- oh, yeah, yeah, he tells her that, <clears throat> yeah, because she wanted to know. Like, he posed a question earlier, are you happier just in your mind thinking that she's out there, you know, somewhere living a happy life or uh-huh. do you really want to know what happened? Yeah. And she said, I really want to know what happened. And that's so he calls her up and tells her what really happened. And that's a great scene because you get the, you get this guy who is <clears throat> at this point, he's got to kill this dude because essentially his family is in harm's way. Right. Also the vengeance thing, because this guy is such an unapologetic fuck the only line this guy has uh the um P- the eddie character that i actually you know for a minute you kind of get taken out the fact of how bad he is is that he says when they killed her it made him sick like so you yeah, know what i mean right. like you, you yeah. humanizes him a little bit that he's a not like a total second. like quick yeah. second real quick yeah. second and he's being honest but everything else you know you're a pussy he's really pushing the line he goes outside calls the mother tells her she's dead she cries. They have this conversation and he, he begs her to let him go and kill him. Kill him. Yeah. You know, he's like, tell me to kill him. Tell me it's okay. Cause he just wants to know that's what she wants as much as he wants to do it. And as soon as she says, you know, yes, he goes back in. The end, it came to tell me, tell me that you loved her. Right. That's what it came down to. Tell yeah. me that you loved her. And she's like, Oh God, yes, I loved her. She was my whole life. She says that was I, enough. She says, I love her in, yeah. in present tense. And he goes, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Great scene. He goes back inside and all you really get is Gandolfini's reaction to his face. And Gandolfini knows that whatever he did when he went outside, he is not going to fucking stop this time. Right. And, and uh, we don't see it, and I'm sure you know. I don't know, Anthony, might more about this. Maybe there's a longer cut where they there show is. him. Yeah, yeah, there is. 
because you don't see him beat him to death, but he basically yeah. pistol whips him into soup and <laughs> comes right. he comes out of the out of the you know whatever that is that little fucking weird house holding the gun upside down that hand weird, shaking that, that little weird house uh, was actually what's left of um, Howard one of Howard Hughes's radar towers really yeah very yeah. interesting um, yeah because that did look like the Evil Dead house. Yeah, it looked like an old skate park that was like abandoned and then used for hobos to fuck in for years. It just wasn't cool. It wasn't cool. Anthony did, and I don't know the name of the car either. Anthony mentioned it before, and I read this yesterday. The car that Eddie Poole drives, which is a very unique looking like yeah. 40s or 50s car, yeah. was very popular in the 50s and 60s. And yeah. apparently at one point, I don't know if you read this or not, but Elvis Presley outbid yeah, Frank probably. Sinatra yeah. to order pre-order one before. So Sinatra offered okay. them like 65,000 and like Elvis, Elvis wanted it yeah. and he gave him 95,000. So, <laughs> so if you didn't know, I guess Elvis was the king. So <laughs> Eddie's dead. We're in California. He should have done this backwards, but he, he figures out through Eddie right, right, through, right. through mash, you know, through plot devices of who, well, he doesn't figure out who Machine is. He figures that out through some de- 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 uh, detective work. Yeah. Goes back to New York and finds out that, uh, what was his name, George? G- yeah, George. George, George is a... Uh, my name's George. <laughs> my name's George. He's a, he's a full-time Napa counterman yeah. who lives with his, with his mom. mother. On a, on a, to go to church with her. Yeah, and, and he doesn't go to church because he's, he's uh, too busy listening to Aphex Twin. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> listening to Aphex <laughs> yeah, Twin. That's right. And uh, yeah, and apparently Dan Zig because he has a Dan Zig poster yeah, up yeah. in his room. This is the climax, the actual climax of the movie. And uh, I will say we did an episode, I don't know, earlier this year uh, where we talked about our favorite scenes set to popular music, mm-hmm. and I definitely if we do another one, which we're talking about, I think this ending scene definitely can be uh, added to that. Um, So he goes into the house, he sneaks into the house and it's dark in the house. Come to daddy by uh, Anthony's uh, one of Anthony's favorite. uh, uh, Well, I don't want to say band. He's uh, a artists artists. You want to call it much like Lloyd. He's wearing the t-shirt tonight. He's got the Apex twin t-shirt. So come to daddy is playing. Very loudly in this house, and this on whole, on, on vinyl, everything. on vinyl. So he's, yeah. he's, a true, he's a true fan. Yep. Uh, that's one thing I forgot was to grab my record, but whatever. <laughs> um, so he's listening on vinyl, but you don't know where he is in the house. Tom is walking around the house. Very, it's dark. It's creepy, and it's a very old woman house. And you know that this dangerous guy is in here somewhere. And then you have the added factor of this very like powerful. And abrasive, abrasive yeah. fucking music playing in actually that's, the background. that's the second time they play that song because if you're if you watch close when uh tom wells um nicholas cage is watching the dino velvet videos one of them has that song also playing like, okay welcome, welcome wow, okay. to the world of dino velvet and then they yeah. and they're playing that song yeah so they and, brought it back around yeah, and uh, when they first walk into Dino Velvet's office, uh, if you look at the tippy top of the screen, uh, the video for Come to Daddy is playing. Real quick, is the video for Come to Daddy the one with the like, giant old guy with the mouth yeah. opening? That scares the fuck out of me. <laughs> like, when that video came out, like, 20 years ago, mm-hmm. I saw it. It scared the fuck out of me. And, like, I don't know, at some point later, like, last year or this year, I just, I put it on, and I was like, that's still fucking frightening, that video. <laughs> and that's him, right? Yeah, that's I've heard him. your demons. Watch it some more. Um, yeah, Richard- all the kid, like, all the people in that in that video, they're all wearing masks of Richard G. Richard D. James is a fixed twin, and they're all wearing masks of him. Okay. It's like kind of, it's like his shtick, like all, all, all his videos, they do that. If you ever watched, like, my, my screen name on a lot of things is Window Licker. There's a really good video called Window Liquor, which is similar to that one, um, where they all have his face. So Tom is walking through this uh, desolate house soundtracked by Come to Daddy, Aphex Twin. Eventually, we get him being attacked by, after a few minutes of walking around, by a, a very, um, 
he's wearing the mask, but he's got the Napa like flannel. He's got his he's got his off work uniform on. He's wearing like a flannel shirt and jeans, but he's got the fucking gimp mask on. Butcher knife, and they start going at it. It's real quick. It's it's a you know when I watch this, I re- hadn't seen it in a few years, probably ten years, and I thought the fight in the house was longer. It's not. They essentially right. just fight in the hallway. They go, right out, they go, go right out the window. Right out the fucking window. Did either one of you knowing? that this dude had been stabbed through the entire gut when he falls out the window and like goes through the awning. Right. Did either one of you just go, Oh, like, yeah, cause there's no way he's getting up from that, but we got to have yeah, a satisfying that, ending. Right. <laughs> yep, that's rough. So, and I like end how up, it, it, it almost turns into like an old um, universal horror movie. Cause even once they're through the window, the music changes to like a, it literally, it sounds like an old, like universal horror movie and now all of a sudden it almost looks black and white they're in a graveyard like yeah. it, it changes tone real quick and now all of a sudden it's like a classic like little except horror. for one one difference from universal horror credits would have dropped right then and then. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah really they would have come through the window and it would have just gone yeah. <laughs> 1941 a universal picture <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah so they they come down they land in a graveyard hey that's weird you're you're your that was side weird, yeah. yard is a graveyard. <laughs> and uh, what ends up happening at this point, Anthony? He makes him take off. Well, you know, there's, there's a little struggle. Finally, uh, Nicolas Cage gets the upper hand, and he's, you know, he's threatening it with his knife. I, yeah, a knife, right? He's got a yeah. knife. Isn't he, like, doing something to his gut, you know, just to, to make sure he's feeling the pain? Probably. I'm, I'm sure there were a couple stabbings yeah. by this point. Uh, but, yeah, he tells him to take off the mask. He throws the knife, too. He like like right machine throws the knife and gets Cage in the gut right doesn't yeah. he get him in the side I, I know Nicholas Cage gets stabbed somewhere I feel yeah like it's the gut or the leg or something he throws I'm, it yeah and, oh he that's right that's right picks it up throws the knife <laughs> and but we yeah, get the right. moment we get we get the very real moment so mm-hmm. in a movie like this you know you get these very extreme characters you got Gandolfini playing this really sleazy fucking you know pornographer and dino velvet really sleazy pornographer and now you've got machine who is the murderer who is the star of these movies and we get the line at the end where he essentially tells him you know you want an answer to all this you're not going to get it my mom didn't abuse me Daddy had, didn't rape me. Yeah, <laughs> he even daddy didn't rape it, me. He even, he even says it like tauntingly he's like daddy didn't rape me yeah uh, you know what i mean he's like yeah so. It, it, yeah, I am a nor- simply enjoys I do it, these it. things because I want to. Yeah, yeah. and he, you know he tells him that the best part about like killing somebody is the moment the knife goes in. Mm-hmm. When Nicholas Cage's character gets the upper hand finally, takes the mask off, and uh, you get this real but also ridiculous moment where yeah. you know he he puts these giant glasses on, yeah, and and, uh, not, and it's not just the glasses; it's like the little twitch. Of yeah. Like focus. Yeah. Like his focusing, eyes. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And then what does he say, Anthony? One more time. He's, my name's George. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my my name's George. He says it in a way, almost like he's hoping to make friends with him. Right. And I don't yeah. think that there can be friends. I don't no, think this nice is going to end that George. way. Nice to meet you. All yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so he ends up. Uh, he he shoots him. Right. Is that how he kills him? Nice. Stabs him. Why? Yeah. Why am I not? Why am I? blanking that out i'm blanking on that for some reason but i don't i don't remember how he killed him at this yeah point. i think he shoots him i think he ends up shooting him um but the, yeah but i don't think at this point he would have left evidence like that i mean because we already went through the fact that if he shoots him he's got to dig some bullets out yeah you know what maybe i don't know why i watched this two days ago i'm blanking on this one scene but he, he had to have stabbed him he does kill the machine and he gets away with it scot-free because we move yeah. forward he's back in his house all the loose ends are, are cleaned up and he gets a letter from uh, Mary Ann, the victim's mother saying, you know, thank well, you for months later though, right? This is months later. Yeah. yeah. Well, first he goes back well, and he, he basically breaks down in his wife's you know, arms Yeah, and says, save me. Yeah, right. Save me, save me, save me. Yeah. I think I forgot about that part because I kind of didn't like that part. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I get it. I do get it. This is a guy that's seen some serious shit, yeah. Yeah. but I think the problem with the movie for me with that is that their relationship just doesn't work for me at all. Like they don't seem like husband and wife. They seem like, like business partners. 
that maybe he fucks once in a while and makes a baby with. And the other thing I got tired of the wife saying every time he called her, although he doesn't call her a lot. Like if this was my wife, she'd be super fucking pissed at the amount that he doesn't call her. But um, every time he says, how is Cindy? She goes, Oh, she's sweet. It's like, no, I know she's sweet. How's the fucking baby? Is she sick? Is she healthy? Is she happy? You know, but like it happens like three times in the movie. How's Cindy? Oh, she's sweet. Yeah. Okay. Are you eating her? What the fuck? <laughs> so we jump ahead a couple months. He's raking the lawn like he did earlier in the film. Gets a note from Mary Ellen's mother thanking him for being honest with him. You know, there's probably a postscript saying, by the way, I would have sat on your face. Um, (laughs) But, you know, cool, cool. You know where I live. If you ever feel like it, I'm around. So that's the story of eight millimeter. I almost said eight mile, but that's a whole different thing. Um, And uh, yeah, so let's before we start rating this, before we start giving our ratings, let's go into the box office of the weekend it came out to find out what it competed with. And then we could talk a little bit about the year 1999 as a whole box office wise. All right. So on that weekend, um, I'll give you the top five. Uh, number five, my favorite Martian. Oif. Th- these top five are not that good. Number four, message in a bottle. I don't know what that is. Right. It's, a pl- it's a police song. Yeah. Number three, the other sister. Oh God! Oh yeah, that's that's a problematic movie, right? Is that the one? I think that's the one where Juliet Lewis plays mentally challenged, and yeah, yeah. All right, move, move on before yeah. someone says something wrong. <laughs> Number two, pay, Payback. That's a good one. Mel Gibson. Gibson. Yeah. Okay. And eight millimeter was number one that that weekend, fourteen point uh, two million. Not no offense to eight millimeter. But being number one in a weekend in February, oh, I'm pretty sure not be number I'm, one. In that. I'm pretty sure I could throw a movie together tomorrow and it would be number one in February. <laughs> well, I think yeah, I, I I think I read somewhere that they did not. He Joel Schumacher had just kind of he he went he basically went on vacation after the whole Batman debacle. He kind of took some time off, and um, this was his next one after all that. And uh, he did not want to do a summer blockbuster. Smarter in his point because he just yeah. did two in a row yeah. that were, you know, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, which Batman were... Batman Forever, don't forget, though, did, did really well when it came out. Like, oh, no, it, uh, like, it did. It did, know. but it was still, you know, <laughs> people were still comparing it to the yeah, Burton course. stuff. Yeah. All right, what do we have for the year, Manster? For the year, I believe we've gone over this year before, but we'll, we'll do a rundown. That year, 8mm came in number 56. All right. Yeah, uh, I think we said... Uh, 36.6 million so the top 10 you've got Blair Witch Project Runaway Bride The Mummy Big Daddy Tarzan The Matrix Austin Powers The Spy Who Shagged Me yeah baby yeah baby (laughs) Toy Story 2 at number 3 you want to guess the top 2 that year well, number one is certainly Phantom Menace if it was 99. Correct. Right. And uh, number two, 99. This uh, was on my top list of movies of 99. Oh, we did that episode two. Also on Andrew Morgan's list. <sighs> 99. Oh, not Magnolia, right? No, no way. No yeah. Way. I think it made like $12. I see um, dead people. Oh, six oh. cents. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, makes sense. You know what's crazy about that is that the Matrix was number six for the year or five? Five, yeah. Like, I would have thought, if you said to me right now, what are the Matrix doing in 99? I'd be like top three easily. Yeah, definitely. That's crazy. All right. All right. So let's, so that was the box office. Um, did we, real quick, Lloyd, I don't know if we did at the beginning, what was the budget on this thing? Uh, I believe it was 40 million on this. 40 million. Uh, 40 million. It made thirty six six domestic, but ninety six six worldwide. Yeah. So it doubled. Yeah, it did pretty well. All right, so let's get to rating eight millimeter, and the way we do it here on the pint is we do it from zero to five with quarter scales uh, usable. So you can go zero if you really hated this fucking thing. Five if you loved it. You can go three point seven five. You can do any of that you want. So uh, I'll start with the Manster. Go to myself, and then we'll go to our guest Anthony. Uh, Manster, what did you think of this film? I don't think you guys are going to like me <laughs> after my rating on this. No, we still love I really you, man. Didn't, I really didn't enjoy it. 
Um, I like Nicolas Cage, but I know you said, you know, he was supposed to be, but I thought his acting was, was too flat in the beginning. His, um, you know, his descent into sort of vigilante madness. I just didn't feel it. The, I didn't, I didn't feel like there was enough of a motive there. I understand your points, you know, what you said earlier, but I just didn't feel it so much. Catherine Keener was definitely underused as was, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I didn't really care for the subject matter all that much. Like I said, my wife got up and walked out, but she doesn't like anything to do with violence against women. Not that I do, <laughs> but I can watch oh, movies. I, mean, uh, <laughs> I think I almost think saying that you don't like the subject matter is just you don't have to say it. I don't yeah. think anybody like I don't think right. anybody's like you know I'm a snuff film and aficionado, and I, don't, I still right. don't like this movie. <laughs> right. uh, so uh, overall, I'm going to give this a two. All four right, out of five. that's fair. That's very fair. I had to think because, like I said, I saw this in the theater with my wife. I own it on DVD. I've seen it a couple times since. I had not seen it in quite a while. This was my first watch in a while. I will say that I think I liked it more prior. This viewing kind of set me in, in, you know, in the way I feel about it right now. I do like this movie. I think it's an interesting subject matter. I do agree that there's some misuse of characters in this thing. And I tell you right now, I would love to see the Russell Crowe, cheaper David, David, David yeah, Fincher. Right, 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 right. I would love yeah. to see what they could have done with this same, you know, and with mm-hmm. the script. I'd even like to read uh, the, original the original script. Yeah. 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 To find out what else is different in this thing. Um, I do like Nicolas Cage. I know that, you know, he's, he's grown that joke persona. Right. But, you know, but even yeah, but even before that, uh, another one of my all time top favorite movies is Raising Arizona. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that, too. That is a great movie. I think if you had asked me maybe a few years ago, right, yeah. I probably would have said yeah. like a three and a quarter. I think mm-hmm. after watching this this time, I'm going to go more like two point seven five. I'm going to wow. I'm going to yeah. give it the official Sir John solid two point seven five because <laughs> The stuff I like about this movie, I like a lot. But there are a couple of, like I said, right. like you said right. before, <clears throat> the wife character almost could not exist at all. It doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Fe- Phoenix is like they... He wasn't famous yet, though. He wasn't... like un- I get what you're saying, underutilized. But, but even the character, the character's right. underutilized. Like You right. get this guy, okay. even if he survived a little bit longer mm-hmm. and made it a little further and maybe got to find out that this was real and see more of the horror of this lifestyle that he's, he admits he's not involved in it, but he's like on it, you know, he works yeah. in it, but he's not like, just because he said, he makes a, there's a comment, like just because I do this doesn't mean I'm all about this. Um, yeah, so yeah, right. I'm going to go, I'm going to go a solid 2.75. I think this is a pretty good movie. There are a lot of things I like about it. There are some things I would change. All right, yeah. Anthony, you brought this movie to us, and we uh, we support you in whatever you say. What do you give 1999's eight millimeter? Uh, I, I'm going to give it a four. All right, and, um, but I, I think I have a more. Um, I, I, this movie's a little more personal to me. Uh, for like a, a bunch, of, and, and I agree with what you said. I think watching it now, I definitely don't like it as much as I used to. But still, I have that kind of not nostalgia, but I kind of have a a weird not connection, but I, I kind of appreciate this movie on a different level. Yeah, that makes um, a big I, difference. I, I know I exactly like, what you're saying. You know, I like porn. A lot of people like porn. Nobody really likes to talk about it, but everybody likes porn. Everybody's on their phone, you know, in the bathroom doing whatever. But I'm really interested in like like uh, you know everybody has their their specifics, like what kind of porn they like. You know what I mean? And I I really, I get really interested in like what, and most people don't like to talk about it, but you know, some of my friends in high school, you know, we were all really open with each other. So like they have their own weird niches and we kind of, you know, we joke about it. I always said, if uh, you, if you admit to killing somebody here, I have to, I have to, I just, I just have to let you know, I have to turn this over to the feds. (laughs) And if, if, if the feds have to listen to a whole episode of our show, I might go to jail. So no, no, I, I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I just, I always found that interesting. Like why certain people like certain kinds of, you know, why do, why do, 
you know, uh, why does why does that person like hand job porn and only hand job porn? Like, why, you know, like I mean, if you go on any porn site, it is so detailed down to the. If you want to see it, two transvestite Asians giving hand jobs, it's there. You know what I mean? Like, it gets so specific. And yeah, I just that interests me a lot. And uh, as far as you know, what kind of person like has to see? you know want like can't get off unless someone's being murdered like you know what i mean like that's Ooh. crazy to me but but interesting in the, in the same way and i always uh i used to um i used to have insomnia and i always wanted to get a, a second job and i always wanted to work at a porn store because uh <laughs> i figure you're i figure you're either gonna you know it's retail it's easy it's you know just cashing people out maybe some inventory whatever but I feel like you're only going to deal with two types of people. You're going to deal with really interesting people that have crazy stories, or you're going to deal with people that don't want to talk to you. They don't want to look at you. They just want to buy their shit and go. That's fair. Probably that's, a lot of those. Yeah, that's totally fair. You know, it, it does come down to at the end, of, like a couple times in the movie, you know, the question is posited, like, why? Like, why right. did he want this? And, you know, because, because he, he could. could. Because he could, yeah, yeah, yeah because was. he was super rich and he had a kink and there's maybe he, like you said, maybe he went through everything else. Like, you right. know, uh, Mexican girls that swallow, <laughs> that swallow bananas with their assholes. Right. right. And he watched every movie yeah. about Mexican <laughs> girls that swallow bananas with their assholes. Otherwise and, he just couldn't get off. Uh, right. But and only then, Chiquita bananas. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. With, with the, and with the sticker on, right. Right. With, with the, with the sticker, sticker on. Half peeled sticker. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you know, I was struggling for a while trying to figure out what is this movie even trying to say? You know, like, what is the point of view of this movie? Uh, I well, think it is just rich people do weird shit because they can. That and uh, one of the lines is uh, that Joaquin Phoenix says, which I definitely think is true, is you're going to see things that you can't unsee. That last look that Nicolas Cage has on his face. It's like, I think that says it all right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't unsee certain things. Right, yeah. he had that like thousand yard stare of like you know he was just in Vietnam, got back from Vietnam. I've d- done things, man. I saw stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Anthony, where can anybody find that? We had talked a little bit before um, off mic that you you said you're a synth nerd, and yeah. you said you have a YouTube channel where we could see uh, some of your videos and check out some of your music. Where can people yeah, find it's that? Weird. Weird little synth jams. Uh, it's on YouTube. My uh, username on YouTube is Window Liquor with two W's and then 808. All right. So go there, check it out, and uh, maybe you'll find a jam that will someday become your come to daddy <laughs> by, uh, by Window Liquor with two W's. Manster, do you want to give everybody out there where they can find Pine of Comics? Yeah, you can find that at pineofcomics.com. A lot of great articles and reviews. Um, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Amazon podcast, a new place we're at. Uh, we put out episodes weekly. Uh, go ahead and give us a review and subscribe to our YouTube channel for podcasts and reviews and video stuff. And on Facebook and Twitter, it's at Pine of Comics, uh, where you can see uh, Facebook Live on Tuesday nights. Is it always Tuesday nights? Nah, it's Tuesday nights is when I'm home a lot. So right. we do those a lot. So Tuesday and other nights uh, where we're, I haven't done any yet, but we're going through the whole Friday the 13th filmography uh, on Instagram. It's at pint underscore O underscore comics. And on Sunday nights at 630, you can hear Sir John talking to people on the radio on WESU Middletown, 88.1 FM, WESUFM.org and on the tune in radio app. All right, Anthony, it's been a lot of fun. Will you come back and do another show with us about something? Absolutely. All right, man. Manster, do it. If you feel the urge to watch a snuff film, go get yourself checked out by a mental health professional. That's a good, yeah, that's good. Good advice. And if you, uh, if you feel the urge to swallow a banana with your asshole, <laughs> give <laughs> there's me a, probably, there's probably a category for there's it. Probably, you film it. There's probably a category for it and give me a call and let me know how it worked out. <laughs> right. See ya. See ya. See you guys. It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off!